All right, guys, so to prepare for our little um, experiment today with diffusion, we're just gonna need a couple of simple things. We're gonna need this tubing that we're gonna call dialysis tubing. It is really just plastic, all right? But when we pour water through there, we'll be able to open this like an actual tube. And it has um, basically the permeability of like a Ziploc bag or kind of like our cell membrane where certain things can pass through this plastic um, if they're small enough and anything that's too big won't be able to fit through the holes in the tubing. We have iodine, which we're gonna use today to um, show us the movement of molecules because iodine has this nice little like light brown amber color um, but if it touches something like flour I'll show you guys the um, color change that you would see it's gonna turn like a purple black and then we're obviously gonna use flour um, to be the inside of our little cell inside the tubing okay to better understand why we're gonna be using flour today and iodine um, we're gonna put a little bit of flour into my beaker All right you can see that it's just this white kind of light solid and then we're going to use iodine because iodine is an indicator that means that it changes colors based upon um, the substance that it's touching when it touches a complex carbohydrate like flour okay you can see that it goes from this light brown kind of color to this dark you can see it's really like almost purplish black right and that is going to indicate to us that the iodine has touched flour. So we'll be able to know um, if the iodine and flour have come in contact in our experiment. All right, so we are going to get our dialysis tubing ready by getting it a little wet in water. And that's going to allow us to open it up so it's actually a tube. So when we use our fingers here, we'll be able to kind of pry this open and it is a little difficult. The plastic does not love to open up, but once we get it, we'll be able to run water through it and that'll make us have a nice open tube that we'll be tying off the ends so that we can put something inside of it and not have it run out. Let's see if I can get this. Normally, I am much better at this. There we go. Okay. So you guys can see I've opened it now. Oops. I've opened it. So now, where's my camera? <laughs> You'll be able to put something in there. And there you go. I just let water run right through. So now it's kind of open like a tube. And in order to use this the way that we want it, I'm gonna tie off the bottom. And then once we have our substance in, we'll tie off the other end as well. So all I did was make this end tied so that we can put our flour inside of our tubing. All right guys, so this is the fun slash messy part where we're gonna have to get that flour inside of our dialysis tubing. And every year it is an absolute mess when we do this, but that is totally fine because that is kind of the fun, oops, of science when we make a big old mess, right? So I don't really care how much I get in there. As long as we get some flour in there, we'll be able to see our results. Now, if you remember anything from Mr. Richards, flour is an example of a very big complex carbohydrate that we're gonna call a polysaccharide. It is large in terms of molecules. And that's actually the reason that the iodine is going to turn that purple black color is because this complex carbohydrate makes iodine change color. If you put iodine on like regular sugar, it would not change color. All right. So I put some flour in there. I'm going to put one more scoop, make it nice and full. Okay. And this big, oh, I'm really afraid it's gonna make a major mess. This big complex carbohydrate is nice and snug inside of my dialysis tubing. I'm gonna give it a good rinse. We don't want any of the flour on the outside or that's gonna mess up our experiment. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse it off. It's okay if some water gets inside of the tubing. That's fine if water's in there. 
but we don't want any flour on the outside. So now that I've rinsed it, I have the flour in there. In fact, I'll even get a little water in just to help move the flour down. Great. Okay, you guys can see that that flour is in the tubing. I got a little bit of water in there, which is totally fine. And then I'm going to tie off the other end of my tubing so that it's kind of like sealed basically and the flower won't escape. So if you guys look at this now, I have this looks kind of like candy and the stylus tubing is full of flour, a little bit of water and that's it. The flower is nice and white. My tubing, remember, it technically does have really tiny holes in there. We just can't see them because they're so small and we're going to see through our experiment if the flower is able to exit out of this tubing. All right, the next part of our experiment is we're just going to need some water. And in an ideal situation, we would use something called distilled water, which means it's like as pure as we really could ask for for our experiment. But don't have any of that. So we're going to use my tap water, which isn't perfect, but that's okay. So we're going to use this as the solution that we're going to add some of the iodine into. And remember this iodine is basically like an indicator because it changed color when the flower touched it. If you guys look now, I'm adding iodine to the water. You can see it. Oh, there's some diffusion. It's diffusing throughout the solution. And you can see it's kind of making the water turn to be that light amber brown color whatever you want to call that okay so the iodine is diffusing throughout my whole solution which if you remember just means it's kind of spreading out oops made a little mess and that's going to help us today to figure out what kind of molecules oh sorry <laughs> can diffuse in and out of that dialysis tubing so we're going to get our iodine solution prepared and then do the last part of our setup all right, so now we're gonna take our dialysis tubing full of flour and we're going to submerge it into this beaker of water. And my di displacement of water is gonna make it overflow, but that's fine. I just wanna make sure that it's nice and covered. So I'm gonna leave this bag and this flour inside of the dialysis tubing for about, I don't know, 15 minutes. Although sometimes the results can be faster just depending on how much iodine I used. So I'm gonna leave it here and we're gonna look at what happens. Now would be the time where we're gonna make our hypothesis if we didn't. What do you think is gonna happen? Is the iodine gonna change color? Is the flower inside the tubing gonna change color? That means is the iodine gonna come into the tubing, flow in there? Or is the flower going to flow out and change the color in the beaker? So really you have to think about what kind of molecule would be able to diffuse in or out of that tubing. Okay, so if we pull this sucker out, you can absolutely see that this flower has turned very much purple. So what does that tell us? What molecule was able to cross through this dialysis tubing, this semi-permeable membrane, and enter into the solution in here? You can see that, look, my iodine didn't change color. So that tells me that what was not able to cross through the tubing and exit out. So guys, once again, we can figure out what molecule moved based upon what changed color. So since the flower inside the tubing changed, we know that the iodine has to go, has to have diffused in here. And since this didn't change color, we know that the flower could not have escaped out. So, we know that iodine is a small enough molecule to diffuse through this semi-permeable membrane, but flour is not small enough to go through the holes in here. 
we know that the iodine did diffuse why it went from a high concentration in our beaker to a low concentration in here because there was no iodine inside of this tubing.